test. Back on. Oh. Uh, we're coming back on the air after an interruption. Hey guys, Craig here, and welcome to another edition of Night Talk. On tonight's episode of Night Talk, we're going to be talking about all things Living Dead Weekend, so stay tuned. It's on, it's on. There's no sound. Play with the rabbit ears. It reports, incredible as they seem, are not the results of mass hysteria. This is Gary Streiner reporting from the Evans City Cemetery in the Night Talk mobile unit. <laughs> some of you may recognize some of this. I unfortunately can't see it because my, my reverse camera won't work. But if I need to, I'll get my headlights on it. Now, how close are you to the, uh, is that it there, the, the Kramer stone? That's it. There we go. That's it, boys and girls. That's I'm sure that was exciting. I have absolutely no idea what it looked like, but we're done it with looked, that. It looked perfect to me. Good. And there he is. There's the man of the hour. How are you tonight, sir? I'm doing great. How's my lighting in the, in the it, Night of the Living Dead mobile unit? It's actually perfect. I want to be referred to from now on by the Living Dead Mo or Night Talk. It's Living Dead's okay too, but can we get T-shirts made with that? Known for the mobile unit. I don't know why I'm off here. I'm I'm I actually have my camera double face to the sun visor in my car. And that, that's I, thought the that, I thought that was very ingenious. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Well, now we need t-shirts <laughs> made that say Night of the Living Dead mobile camera unit. You well, know, that, Gary Strenner well, Enterprises, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll have we'll to try. call Fright Rags, Terror Threads. We'll get those guys on the horn immediately. We'll get it done. So uh, so anyway, I know that unfortunately um, – we, we just realized that uh, Kevin and Mandy are, are having some problems with their camera. Yes. And uh, as this technology goes, uh, they will probably only be on audio. Yes, we are. Uh, we are currently sending them some AOL discs to boot up with their net zero immediately. So we'll get them on. <laughs> right. Well, they're inside the mall and that, that you know, I, I know StreamYard in particular really needs uh, you do need it. Uh, that, that's why I can't operate this out of my home because my DSL is, we live in the country, dude. And, uh, so, so anyway, uh, so we're just killing time till we they are. get back on or are they, are they with us? I see, I'm jealous of you because you're in the cemetery, they're in the mall and I, and I'm here just surrounded by posters and I'm like, I want to be where you guys are. I don't want to be here. I want to be there. You, you know what? I'm leaving. Due, you got to pay your dues to be where we are. You okay? know what, everyone? It was a pleasure hosting Night Talk for the second time. I'm going to start walking to Pennsylvania right now. Gary, I'll see you in about 24 hours. 12 hours. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right. So, where's Kevin and Mandy? Are we going to. Hey, we did it. Oh, there they are. Hey, it's working. <laughs> hey, guys. Woo! Good to see the two Ians. What's that? Oh, oh, it's a live <laughs> phone call. Yeah. Are we pranking How someone on the air? What happened? What got it working? Um, Lots of hard work. <laughs> yeah. Resetting everything and rebooting everything. And then it just Oh, came. that's awesome. Great friend background. So, but it's all good. Oh, we're so happy to, to have you. You missed, you missed my whole opening, though. I'm really kind of disappointed <laughs> about that. They could check it out on YouTube, which we'll post the link yes. to for everyone yes, else later on. They'll be, they'll be a treat for you even after you've been in it. The one thing that we don't have on camera was uh, Gary was driving around on, uh, you know, the cemetery and, and he ran into a gentleman who was like, hey, were you in the movie? And it was it was really just like 
cool to to see that um you know, it's for- another fan up in the cemetery you know anyway you should know kevin that, that i'm i want i want this to be called i'm i and and mandy i am in the night talk mobile unit okay <laughs> <laughs> which means i'm in my truck we need, we need <laughs> like you're in, a, in, a, in a news mobile unit so I'll yeah good good good, good i'm leaving my engine running too does that help the effect at all <laughs> We need to get you like the magnets that you put on the side of a vehicle. I was just saying that magnets, shirts, hats, everything. Oh no. And here's, I'm blocking traffic with another car. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> this is just, this is part of the mobile unit business. You know, you got to move your mobile unit. That's why it's mobile. You must Tell make them you're mobile. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, let's get the show going because I, I, I only want to be here because I I think that uh, you know I I when I started the Living Dead Fest in two thousand and the two thousand seven I think um, Kevin Christ was the first person I don't even know how he found I don't know you might be able to tell me how you even found out <laughs> I know, about I it. remember it very well actually so you remember it very well oh sure sure. <laughs> Well, all of a sudden, I mean, your thing, you you were independently doing your thing, trying to like make this, you know, invent this, this, this event in Evan City. At the same time, I'm off in the Monroeville Mall, not knowing anybody yet, not knowing you or anybody from any of the movies, just all by myself, come up and coming up with this idea of having this, this like museum thing in the mall. And, and while that was all happening, I saw an article in the, in the Butler Eagle that said there you go that the headline of the article was um Paul festival to bring thousands to evan city and then, it, <laughs> then, then the article went on to, to quote you and rick rufenstein and right and i rufenstein yes and and i got a hold of rick i didn't know rick then either and he said well you need to get a hold of gary somehow he gave me a way to get a hold of you and then we met at the country kitchen and talked about it and yeah that's where we were like well I'm doing this thing over in the mall. You're doing this thing over in Evan City. These things need to somehow we need to work with each other. And, That's how. And you happened. were on. You were kind of on shaky grounds at the at the mall at that point, right? I mean, they were talking. To, was the plan to move you, or you? You made three moves, or yeah. Uh, at that point, we were really at the beginning. There wasn't any anything really started yet. We we I had a different store in the mall. It was a collectibles toy store. And I just started to, you know, create a little tribute area for for Dawn of the Dead. And so we hadn't encountered any of those those issues yet Um, because we we did the mall thing for a good four years before. Right. Well, you were uh, the, the, the first event that you had. Well, you were involved in the in the initial stages, right, with the zombie walks. Well, only as a vendor. Um, that was a different entity oh, okay. that was doing the zombie walks. It, 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 at that time, the whole my approach to it was I'm from Evan City. I'm from Pittsburgh. I used to go to the Monroeville Mall. And zombies are this, this pop culture phenomenon happening right now. And so my idea was, and, and always my whole life was that running around telling everybody, well, you know, that all started in my little hometown in Evan City. And I kind of had this, even though I had nothing to do with it, I just, because it was my family's cemetery. So I went to that cemetery because my grandparents were buried there. I would always tell everybody, well, I didn't have anything to do with it, but it's my cemetery in my hometown. And I think it's cool. And, and, and Pittsburgh should get credit for that in Devon City specifically and the Monroeville Mall and all these things. So, so I approached it from that, like the pride of being from Pittsburgh that has this, you know, history behind it that started this, this pop culture thing that I was more about celebrating zombies coming from Pittsburgh from that approach and less from the, you know, the film studies approach, you know, that, that, you know, that, that is going on a lot now with, with Garth and other George Romero. Right. You know, so, right. So I came at it. So like the early days of the things I was doing was to create an attraction to at the mall where everybody could come out and have some fun. There were zombie walks. It was the era where zombie walks were popular and we did a lot of goofy stuff back in those days. That's how I met Mandy because she was working in the mall, and and, and she was goofy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had, a, I had a, a real 
job in the mall. I had a, I didn't even work in an office, uh, or I didn't even work in retail. I worked for an office, um, and I didn't Ugh. go to the zombie walks then. I got a right. job in the mall thinking I'm so cool. I work at Monroeville Mall, and that was kind of originally cool enough for me. Right, so right. The first thing we created, we called it Monroeville Zombies, and we called it the zombie attraction, and we had some gimmicks and fun things to do there. And then I would always tell everybody, well, the museum is the mall, and we're just sort of like the side, the side attraction and gift shop to what really is the museum, which is the entire mall. And then we've, over the years, it grew into, we actually have a museum in the mall, but there's a lot of things in between point A and point B <laughs> to get there. But um, we did a lot of goofy stuff like like a zombie car wash and a zombie carnival. And we did do a zombie walk Oh, once. we did all the goofy stuff and we and, dressed up ourselves. And... and the zombie walk that we did was the, the first, right at the very beginning of the Save the Chapel where we, it was the very first, you know, contributions to the chapel were collected at the zombie walk. It is, we called it the crawl in the mall. So Gary was there. Yes, I was. Okay. Yeah, I think so, I think I was there. I, I, I it all becomes there. a bit of a blur. There was a there was a collection bucket that you and and, and I believe Joel and and I yeah yeah I yeah there. yeah. And no, was, yeah, of course I remember yeah, that. Now yeah. now you it's completely yeah. clear it was in the the lower level store. Yeah, yeah that's version. where I met everybody. I mean, I I came into it totally cold. I came in, I. I retired, you know, and I expected to be in retirement and I came back to Evan city cause that's I've, I've owned a farm here since 1972 and I came back to retire on my farm and, you know, out of nowhere, I got a call from Rick Reifenstein who said, Hey, um, you know, I'm, well, I knew Rick, I, I met him was a really funny thing. I met Rick Reifenstein again in a barber shop up here in the middle of nowhere and we're looking at one another and and because rick used to work at wrs motion picture labs he was an editor there and you know we had a lot of contact with rick back in 1967 and uh and and i'm looking at him and he's looking at me and finally he said are you gary Streiner?" and i said yeah who are you and he goes, i'm rick reifenstein and uh that so that's started my involvement because he uh, a, a few months later you know, he called me and said, hey, it's the 40th anniversary of Night of the Living Dead. And Evan, you know, we want to do something in Evan City for it. And it was like, yeah, I mean, it was crazy. We, we all for that whole year of 2008, you know, we had all these brainstorms. And I so I hadn't met you. Well, when did I meet you in that? That's process? when that, that you and Rick were planning and talking about these ideas. And somehow right. in the Evan City column of the Butler Regal, somebody must have, you know, got wind of it and they ran a little. And, and at that point, nothing. Yeah, was Paula Grubbs. So, Paula was our, right, Paula right. gave us everything that we, we had in the Butler Eagle. And because yeah. there was nothing concrete yet, it was just a really small article that said, zombie festival plant being planned could bring thousands to Evan City. <laughs> and, and I saw that and I said, well, I'm doing that here. Like, I need to find out these what this is all about. And that's when I'm, and so I met you and then and right. that was 2008. And, yep. and it was right shortly before. And then that's when you first did the first, the, you know, the one night screening thing. Right. The, well, the that what, what happened was it, it, is that, Oh, we, we, we were, we were going to have reenactments and casting sessions and uh, all this stuff. We spent the whole, you know, summer, uh, talking about, you know, the great, um, event that we could plan. And then we got around to August and we go, well, this is all wonderful. And we have all this laid out. Who's going to pay for any of it? And of course, everybody looked around and said, nobody. So, uh, uh, you know, it was obvious that we had spent too much time planning and not enough time. Th this was just, um, you know, something out of midair. You know, it, it, it really didn't necessarily have a plan. So the museum so, started first before you guys had ever even met then, right? No, no, it was well, in Monroeville. It, the one right. in Monroeville okay. yeah. started first, yes. But Correct, it, it, right. We did, at that time, we weren't calling it the Living Dead Museum, but it was... 
it was a tiny one room. It was almost a Dawn of the Dead tribute room more than it right. was an actual museum where we would tell everybody the mall's the museum and, you know, we we're kind of paying tribute to that. So we had that well underway. And then we actually moved to three different locations in the mall in the first four years of that operation. Um, Gary right. touched on that right. about the problems with the mall, which is a mall is is a, is, a, is a place of business and shopping and, 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 and their business model is to get as many stores, you know, as possible. And it, at that time in the, in, 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 in the history of malls, okay, <laughs> excuse me a second. <laughs> You're right. She's fine. <laughs> She's coming back She'll as a zombie fine. in like two She'll minutes. Be, right. I just fine. like breathed in water and tried to act like I did I hate when that happens. So the, well, what happened was if you were a independent store, the mall would shuffle you around like, well, we'll ha we need that space for this big store. We'll shuffle you over here. And that works fine if you're just a little shop and you just have to move your merchandise around. But it didn't work for right. what we were doing, which is trying to build a museum that has to be, you know, set all up all over again. So yeah. so after the third one of those, I kind of was ready to throw in the towel and, 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 and not do this any further. And then <laughs> that's by then. Gary had been running the Living Dead Fest several okay. times. I don't remember three or four times, and it, it occurred. So, so my original idea was to always do this out of Evan City anyway. That's where I'm. That's where I grew up. That's where my family cemetery is. That's really where it all started. But it oh, never. Yeah. I never thought it would work there. So I thought the mall was a better jumping off point because it's already a place where there's people going to. Um, but really, I love the idea. Like when Gary said, why don't you put the museum in Evan City? And I'm like, do you think it would work there? And, and you know, it'd be great because it's right around the corner from my home. And so we, we just did that. We just, just said, well, the mall's a lot of trouble to move around all the time. Let's just put it in Evan City where we can stay put for a long time. And we ended up doing that for seven years. We were in Evan City with that location. I remember but it was... Get... I'm sorry. It, Go ahead. It, no, no, it was great for the fest too because and now uh, there was something more to come to Evan City for than just the, uh, you know, Edco Park. Which so so anyway, that what happened was in, in that first year, it was, you know, we got to do something. You know, we started this, we got to do something, and I think that, you know, Kevin and and Mandy have been in this position a million times. It's like it's too hard to get these doors swinging open. And, and, and so even if you can't do what you really truly set out and wanted to do, you still have to do something. So at the 11th hour, I said, that's it. We'll just have a really good screening, you know, hired a really good projection system. And that was it. It was freezing cold and, and, about 250 people showed up and I don't even know how they knew about it. To be honest with you, this was before Facebook. I was doing everything. I was publicizing the, the, the fest uh, off of a, a, an email list, you know, and I would type, it was, it was just amazing. You know, I, I would type an email. I'm saying, okay, I'm going now. I'm on my way over to the printer to pick up the tickets and people would cheer and, you know, <laughs> and, and, and just get so excited about this. And that first screening to me in, in it, it was, like I said, it was freezing cold. We, I think we had maybe three guests up in one of the pavilions, Ross, probably Ross, Jack, and um, I don't know, um, not Heinzman. Heinzman never made one, unfortunately. Uh, somebody else, maybe Koss. I don't know. You have, do you remember that first one? Any of I you two? only remember it because I arrived when everybody was leaving because it was on Halloween. <laughs> night and I was taking my kids trick-or-treating. And, and All I, right. had a, I had a little merchandise booth set up in the pavilion, but I sent one of my employees there. And then I said, I'll come later. Hopefully it'll still be happening. And, and I got there right about the time that it, that it ended. So I don't know who was there. Um, I, remember I don't know. Next year very well. I, I don't know who they were either. I never met any of them. Yeah, it was really kind of strange. But, but kind of the shining achievement of that night, there was a doctor that came up to me 
um, after the or, or before the screening, and he uh, he said, I, uh, "Boy, he said, I just want to thank you. I'm a huge Night of the Living Dead fan." And he said um, he had with him his son, who was probably 15 years old, 14, 15 years old, and he said, "I'm I'm I'm just so thrilled that I can, you know." It, it, introduce my son to night of the living dead in this manner and that just meant so much to me it was just like wow this is far beyond anything this fa <laughs> fandom i kept saying the whole time why did i spend my life in advertising you know why didn't i do this 20 years ago you know when people it, it's adoration and they call me sir and they do all this stuff <laughs> and meanwhile you know i instead i was being beat up by advertising but that was it. It was that had to happen. And of course, 2009 was a disastrous year weather wise. And, and, and to the best of my knowledge, the only disastrous year um, since then. I mean, it's, it's been, it's been pretty good for an outdoor event, but anyway, a so few rains that were like, yeah, you know, not the whole half weekend, a day. Half a day rain. Yeah. 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 And people, people dealt with it. You know, it, it, it became, it was like Woodstock, you know, it became <laughs> part of the event and that's what was great about it. Everybody loved it, you know, from, from that very first screening, everybody loved it. And, uh, and, and so, you know, that went on and then, um, and it kept getting, you know, it kept getting bigger every year. We had more guests every year. And what was, I think the last year I did it was 2014. Yeah, it was. The and year that, you, the, picked, that the chapel dedication and George, right. yeah. and George came in. And, and quite frankly, I've said this before, but it was like, in my mind, it was like, wait a minute, you just you know you had the chapel <laughs> second dedication and actually and one with george there and uh, well, how are you going to top this you know and and quite frankly by that time i was really burnt out i was just because i had nobody i mean well i did a bit uh, as it went on a little bit later and and Chris and Sandy and, and, and all those people, uh, you know, jumped on as volunteers and that the whole volunteer situation was like, wow, all these people, you know, they're just so excited to be here. And, and every year was a love fest as far as I'm concerned. It just, and, and, and then, but I, as I said, it was like, and and the thing of it was was I think my mission was more to I I'm only I was only involved with Night of the Living Dead in in that of that group and I always felt it a little bit strange to do the other Romero films to make it a wider thing and I always kind of wanted no Night of the Living Dead is my mark and I want to stick with it and um, and that's really tough it's really hard to. You know, I think probably like eight or nine hundred people were, was the most that we brought in. Uh, and that was probably the year that George was there. So he was a big part of that draw. Um, <clears throat> but then that was it. It was just like I was really bored with it. I was I, I was just bored with the production of it and, and really wanted to see it flourish. And you know, Kevin and I had a conversation and I said, I think I'm giving it up. Do you want to take it over? And he goes, sure. You know, and, um, uh, and, and that was it. So my part now is done. I can go home. <laughs> well, now you, now you're the commander of the night, of the living dead mobile unit there. So you're, you're, you're <laughs> night talk mobile unit. I, so. Do I get a badge or a hat or anything? I we're going to, we're going to come up with so. something for you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have your I own love it. like an id lanyard there we yeah. go yeah <laughs> perfect perfect right. are we gonna make uh, this uh, happen before june's show or <laughs> well i no, don't we, know about we have that way too much to do to be making gary a lanyard <laughs> all right all right i'll get started on that <laughs> okay. right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I there, don't think I it's. That's it doesn't just get a matter of one way or another very much <laughs> so i'll get some people um, but so yeah so and so subsequently you know i've been at every living dead weekend or a living dead fest and you know 
Kevin out of courtesy calls me and says, do you want a table? And I go, well, I'm kind of, it's, I'm kind of a resident guest, you know, <laughs> I, I, I sure I want a table. So it's always a joy. And, and, you know, what, what, in my mind, what you guys have been able to do couldn't be done in Evan City. You, you know, uh, un, just unfortunately, it just, uh, Evan City doesn't have an indoor facility that's big enough to handle all that. Right. You know, yeah, so that's, that's the, been the biggest challenge. The, the first year, the first year that we, 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 we approached this, we thought, well, how big can we make it in Evan City? We need to take it through the whole town. And we did, we got guests from the other movies and we put things all around the different, different parts of, of, you know, the streets and the parking lots and the park. And we tried to, you know, make it town wide, but it really and just that, didn't work that well like that. That, well, that was the year that um, we, we st still at least had, you know, the chairman of the town council very much behind it because he, he saw the virtue of promoting this as a, a, a but, but it just, it kind of, I don't know, the town's support didn't meet up to, to what was really expected. And so it all, all became, you know, Kevin and Mandy and, and then getting yelled at because people were parked in people's driveways and yeah, it just I mean, all, that's you know, it's not that there wasn't enough town support because we went to all of those little local meetings. Right. There are some really awesome and involved people in Evan City. I think that there's not enough people in Evan City itself. Like what we get out of the mall is the co-tenancy of being around other stores. Right. People already know that they're going out to do something. And, you know, to go to Evan City, you had to purposely plan on driving the 40 minutes out there. Right, right. And everybody goes to the mall already. So, yeah, no, it, it, it all made perfect sense. Um, and, and I think it, it but I, I just, what year was the first year that you, you did the two shows? That was 16, 18? What was that? Uh, that 17? Seven, the one with 17? Okay. I think. 2017, I think. That was it blew my mind. It just blew my mind. I it was like, holy crap! This is a. I mean, it's now, it's now really a show, <laughs> you know. Um, instead of being some little boutiquey kind of thing, and 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 so I I think all things happen for a good reason, and I think it makes so much sense, more sense that you guys are back at the mall. Hey, I drive past the museum every single day, at least three times. And, and, uh, it's sorely missed. I mean, in my, from my perspective, but, uh, why not have two know. locations? You know, we, well, our original plan was to have two locations and to maintain our Evan city shop and uh, come back to the mall. I really love the mall. Uh, but as far as how the pandemic affected our independent oh, business, right. it just wasn't feasible for us. It was the original right. plan. We actually rented this location here that we're in now in the mall years ago in 2019 and started the, uh, the plans to fix the space and build um, a more Dawn of the Dead centric museum and have completely different exhibits that were in Evan City. And we would have two locations, and two events. And we were well on the way for that when, when the pandemic hit and then everything was closed. We were supposed to open Monroeville in spring of 2020. Yeah. And then we had to close Evan City and delay the opening of Monroeville. And we, the whole summer, nothing was open. And yeah. over the course of the summer, we had to make a decision. Well, what are we going to do? What, what is, at that time, we weren't really sure what the state of tourism would be. And when it would yeah. return, right. would we be sitting there? We, you know, we paid rent on two locations for for nine months while there were, were neither one when of them were closed. open. Yeah. So oh, wow. at some point, we had to make a decision, a plan, and that plan ultimately became strike Evan City, take those exhibits, <clears> supersize <throat> the Monroeville one, redo the whole thing. Like like this Night of the Living Dead exhibit that's behind us here, that was in Evan City. So we completely rearranged and redid the layout that we were doing in Monroeville, rebuilt the whole thing, added 
probably four more exhibit rooms to fit Evan City's exhibits in here too. And just went with that. So to the world, it looks like we moved, but really we just, you know, had two operations, two locations, and one of them didn't make it out of the pandemic. So <laughs> that's the real right. Answer. Well, we have we have conversations regularly about what how we can bring something back to Evan City. It's just it's really just a, a tough one. That's all. It's if there um, was a venue. It's just the, it comes <clears> down to yeah. The thing where this outdoor venue thing is hard to make work, um, and it has to be. I actually have two or three working ideas of how to reinvent something in Evan City. It, it would be a little bit, it would be very different than what we do in Monroeville because it has to be. And it'd be right. a little different than what we did before too. But we might return well, and do, do an old school, you know, small, you know, Echo Park version before we get to this other idea that I have, which is completely different, but we're not ready to. Well, well we talked about it. You know, it's uh, both of us. We just, uh, so many people just, come up with fond memories of the of the small thing so there are there are you know people that like the mall show and there are people that like the intimacy of the uh you know the echo park you people know, on show. facebook people on facebook right now are saying the 2014 edco park event was incredible um people just saying that even the 2016 2017 events were great and we're just getting a ton of uh, comments here people saying they love the show evan city a uh, great little town and everything but yeah the edco park thing people are, are ranting and raving about here so that's that's pretty cool i wish i could have went to some yeah. of these i didn't know it's, these even we're, existed we're going to do some we're, we're not giving up on evan city i assure you there will be an evan city event, event of going on you know future years just how that event plays out and where exactly just the structure of it might change a little, but we're working on something that will work with a different format than works in Monroeville. You know, obviously in Monroeville, you, we have unlimited space and it's all, we can always expand ever and ever in the mall. Like there's always another storefront we can take over. <laughs> so you can know, always you know, even build a, a we're going to have six storefronts if you count the museum storefront. So, yeah. So, so I, I think the bigger, message here is is that you know businesses get forced into different venues and having to go down different paths and 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 whatever and right now you know the mall makes the most sense for living dead weekend but our hearts have never given up the small thing our, our all of our hearts are still in that unbelievable fan buzz you know that 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 you get when people are enjoying themselves it's family it's like having a you know a family outdoor picnic you know because once you get kind of uh, successive years you know it was funny I, I don't remember i think it was probably the the first year that daz came came over um you know, we had. I I I I I would talk to like Jim about this, and I'd just say, you know, um, how many really hardcore, hard, hard, hardcore Night of the Living Dead fans do you think are in existence? And we saw somehow we both came up with probably. I mean, I'm talking about the really hardcore fans. And, and we came up with probably about 500, you know, uh, and, and all of a sudden, you know, I realized this little show in dinky little, you know, if it's not dinky, it's small. That's what I meant. I'm not, not meaning to agree. I love Ed, Edco Park and I love Cindy, the person that runs it. She's just, you know, always been a dream to me. And again, as you were saying, Mandy, the, the effort that they bring together, that their whole energy, you know, is, is really wonderful. Um, you know, but but I I I just I realized that you know we 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 brought people in from freaking Australia, <laughs> you know we brought people in from France, we brought people in from England, we brought people in from Germany, you know, and 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 it was like wow, I, you know, 
that that's an enormous success considering it started out being nothing. There was nothing for Night of the Living Dead, you know? Um, so, so all those things just, it, it isn't about, I don't know. It certainly isn't about money. I can say that, you, you know, uh, there wasn't a lot of money to be made at, at those fests, but that it didn't, it really didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. I didn't, I never cared about it. It, it, it was that camaraderie, you know, that you can't buy that, you know? And, uh, and, and so it's, it, it, it's just a tone of something or, you know, I, the people, look, the, what I, the credit that I would get, want to give to you two is that you were able to take that to the mall and explode that out by five times or three times. And it still has that same intimacy. Those, that same group of people are all still coming to that event, you know, and that, that that's another conundrum to, to some degree, you know, people will be happy to fly in, you know, from Germany, you know, or England or whatever once, but they're likely not to do that twice, you know, in, in but some of them year. are, we do have people repeat coming in year after year and that. Oh, that no, no, no. On... I'm just saying in one year. Oh, right. You yeah, know. yeah. Yeah. But it touches on an error that I had made from the beginning, which was trying to, to focus on the locals, we'll focus on the, the local fans that, that live in Pittsburgh and Monroeville and Evan City. And, and what we've learned is that is that our audience is is a world a world mm -hmm. audience, a worldwide audience. And we're not we're not running a local event that we're expecting all the locals to attend. And trying to make it an event that, that attracts a lot of locals was a little bit of a mistake in the beginning years. Because now right. we have this this following that's that's there are things in Pittsburgh that are horror conventions and and zombie walks that used to be here and stuff that did a great job of getting the locals. But and but this was too niche of a thing to only work with the locals. And so it's somehow not by design in the beginning, but you know, now we understand and what we're working with that it worked out that that people are coming to these locations from other places and, and without the locations being the center of the, of the thing, it isn't just the celebrities. It's, it's marrying the celebrity appearances with the locations where the films were made. That is what made living dead weekend yep. take off. And let, let's hats off to Larry's tours. I mean, you know, <laughs> he, he, again, it just, it, it all comes from that same heart. You know, it, it, it doesn't come from, Hey, here's a really good thing for commerce. It's like he lives and breathes it. And so he does a really good job. Never. I've never heard anybody ever complain that they felt like, you know, the tour wasn't worth it. And, and, you know, and, and his ability and your ability to expand that out to be able to go to, to the airport and be able to do all these other things. It's, you know, we know yeah. that Craig is there salivating because yeah, that, that's that's Lawrence the Vincent that we're, we're discussing. And and we met him, Larry, um, when he, you know, also like like myself doing my own thing and Gary's doing his thing. Larry started out just doing his own thing and started organizing a local tour in Pittsburgh that just was, you know, whoever wanted to show up and be toured around. Right. That's there. how you met him. And we, yeah. sh we showed up. It was, he was on Facebook, you know, and at the time I yeah. think his Facebook was just uh, him doing his like computer IT stuff. So, right. And the other person that showed up, the other significant person that's now part of our production team is Daz it's Sergeant. Daz. That's, that's how, how we met him. Daz. So Shout out to Daz. Daz. So Larry put together a beacon that brought what we were doing out, brought what Daz was, you know, doing his fandom from England out, and we all sort of met, and that became the initial, you know, team, team that would go on to like make all this stuff work. You know, Daz right. has his skill sets, and Larry has his, and and then we now right. have another a fifth member that that I would call integral part of the team, and that's um, Kip Henneklin, who's stepped up a lot in the last couple of years just doing doing everything, everything. like like you know Larry right. yeah, with local and he he tips here he, all the time throughout the year yeah he previously the was and, ran the museum 
It or he still does. The, no, he never ran the museum. He built the museum. <laughs> he, yeah, he physically <laughs> built it. But he but he doesn't work here. But he, he comes in, you know, we do everything at night. We sneak in and build everything and come up with the ideas <laughs> and stuff at night. And so that's usually when we'll meet here at the mall and we'll get things done. And then and then Dave Novak is our is our museum, current museum manager that runs the museum every day when we're doing all the other projects, you know. I mean, we have to mention Angie Grossman who ran everything out of Evan City when we were there. And worked for you before right. you yeah. were even, when but you had a different business. Unfortunately, Monroeville is a little too far away for her to do the day-to-day -day stuff here in Monroeville. But, so we, that's the, the current team is, is, you know, Mandy and I and Daz and Larry and Kip and- And, um, and, and they, Daz, I, I'm sorry, Daz was actually I took him to an Evan City Council meeting, and that I was like that. <laughs> for <laughs> the Evan City Council. They, I guarantee you, they couldn't understand probably at least twenty percent of what he was saying, but they, <laughs> because of the accent. But, but were they, they were, charmed by the accent? Oh the my accent? God! Yes. Oh, absolutely. He he could have. You know, he could have easily run for mayor. You know, look, MNC <laughs> doesn't see a lot of foreigners. <laughs> I mean, and to now, and 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 he, he's dad's like he was. He, he he again, it's all about freaking heart, you know. <laughs> and he was like, he was a bit terrified to do it in the first place, but he did, he did it cause I asked him to do it. And, uh, and, and he just went off <laughs> and they loved him. And, and I swear to God that at, that was the moment that town council, because uh, of, uh, you know, the same person was the head of town council as, as when dads came in and that's when, you know, we were able to push through having, you know, a, a memorial to Night of the Living Dead over by the library, you know, which was another thing, you know, um, and 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 that, oh God, look, I I think that everybody has some degree of appreciation of what it takes to put on a show, but I think that Mandy and Kevin and I can talk firsthand of of the exhaustion <laughs> that it takes and the shame of it is by the time you get to the event you're so damn tired <laughs> that you can't even and you have to be a, on top of all the goings on and what's not working and what is working so it, it, i i used to always say i i'm i'm uh um what what am what's the word i want uh, not envious i'm a, a, i'm i'm a bit pissed off <laughs> that people could go and watch Night of the Living Dead unencumbered. I never got to do that. I never got to oh, okay. just go to a movie theater and sit down and be exposed to this something new. And, and I always felt cheated <laughs> about that. So when people say, oh, well, oh my God, you, you know, you were able to partake in the doing of it. Well, yeah, but I really, but I never got to the payoff. You know, I never got the same rush to the payoff. I, I also have been asked, you know, okay, what, um, considering having been part of making it in the first place and, and then what happened with the living dead fest and the fundraiser, let, let's also put that in perspective, uh, perspective, the, the fundraiser for the chapel really made this whole thing happen. You know, it solidified it because that was it. The fans went freaking nuts you know, they, they couldn't buy enough T-shirts. They couldn't buy enough chapel, you know, a little casket with chapel parts in it. It, 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 it was so thrilling. I, I just remember in the early stages of it, you know, I mean, we're, we're charging $20 and $10 and, you know, and I, and, and uh, I said to Sandy Trap at one point in time, it was like, this is going to take a long time to get $50,000. It's like when you're, when you're tallying it up, but then all of a sudden, you know, we'd have a table at a, a show, you know, and 
you know, the report would be that we made fifteen hundred dollars, and and it just went on and on like that. And the support and all the talent in the fan base that just stepped up. Terry Callen, my God, what would we yeah. have done without Terry Callen? You know, and, and and more Matt Orsman and people who all you all I had to do was go on Facebook and say. Damn, we need some flyers. And next thing, there's like five different flyers in my email. You know, that's the dedication. And that's what that's what makes this important. Not that it's in the mall or not that, you know, these people, if, if you had it in the middle of Interstate 79, they'd say, oh, fine. That sounds like it'd be really fun because they would know. And I learned that from my very first convention which was uh, Monster Bash when they still had it over at the hotel in Butler. I was supposed to meet someone over there and give them some flyers. And it, as it turned out, we had our communications totally off and she was at a different hotel. And, 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 but, but I got to, it was on a Friday in the afternoon and I got to watch all these people come in, you know, and, and as they were coming into Monster Bash, it was just like this love fest, you know, it was like screaming and running and hugging, you know, and because they hadn't seen this person since last year. And I go, wow, that's what this is all about. It's about community. You know, it's about, um, you know, like-minded people having, having uh, a focus, you know, and, and being able, and that, and that's, you know, hats off to you guys, because I think you've done that to the nth degree, you know, uh, and, and, it, and it, I don't know that it's necessarily easy to do that. I, I think that it takes some skills to do that. It's being real in the first place. I always used to say, and then I go to all these other conventions and to me, they were really kind of boring. You know, they were kind of cookie cutter. You know, every single, you know, convention is basically the same. You know, you know the same routine, the same this, the same that. And they're so big that you never get to feel that intimacy. So, so I, I, I think that that's what you guys have done. If you've taken it from Edco Park into the mall and still kept that intimacy, which I your, uh, hats off to you for being able to do that. Well, I got to jump in here with a question from Facebook. Uh, will the movie room return this year? I, I, I had to ask this for this person. The um, we're working on it. Well, what, we you want to. Hold on, I'm the question so I can answer it. The movie room that's in the museum. I'm reading these questions and I'm like, oh my God. Or a movie room at the, oh. like at the weekend. Oh. Because. Oh, good question. The, the answer Wait is. Wait a minute. Yeah, Say that again. Both. So I'm not sure that if the person is asking about, you know, the, like a small screening room that we had in the museum itself. Right. To play documentaries or if the person is asking about at one of the early mall living dead weekends, we had a storefront that was just showing, showing documentary all weekend long. Right. And in the, the answer is actually yes to both. Cool. But probably the one at the weekend will happen first, not the dedicated one in the museum. Now um, you guys, yeah, they said at the weekend. Yeah. Oh, okay. We yeah. are working uh, on that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now you guys uh, were in charge too of getting, was it, correct me if I'm wrong. You had Dawn of the dead, the, the 3D version playing at the Cinemark at one point, too? Yeah, we yeah. did. Okay, yeah. that's so cool. The theater's right in the mall, so it makes sense to do screenings there. Um, well, you, your first screening was Dawn of the Dead in the mall. Yeah. 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 That so was like a big blow up Except the, the problem to... was that somebody had the wrong lights turned off or something, right? Oh, yeah. That, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that's different. That's, so, that, that one's no good. So, yeah, that was 12 years <laughs> ago. Count. 12 years ago, we screened Dawn of the Dead in the middle of the court in the mall. Not in, There wasn't right. a theater in the mall at the time. So we, we had a big projecto screen and everything, and we screened it in the mall, and it was a charity screening. Um, but the, the lights in the mall are kind of computer-controlled, and they programmed them to go down at 9 p.m. in the wrong court in the mall. Oh, so no. one of the mall was dark, and we're all set up in the other end. It didn't get dark, and it was difficult to see the screen. But um, we still, you know, people stayed and watched it and the money all went to charity and it was still successful, but it was hugely disappointing to be like 
everything was perfect to be to be the promoter of that event. right right <laughs> oh no kevin that, I, I saw you put a bunch of sodas and popcorns in a shopping cart and push them through the crowd <laughs> going i'm so sorry well, this is before we <laughs> met I mean, soda, this is, this is before know? we we were like i didn't even know her, we barely knew together, her yeah. she was just one of the people coming to that screen yeah it, so it probably didn't matter to any of the fans because we all know these movies so well that we could just hear the audio and it's like it's like a podcast yeah. to us we're like oh whatever i don't even need to see the thing it's we got the yeah. audio but then in was i think it was 2018 we we the theater was here and and so we we secured the rights to show the 3d version in the mall and that was cool That's too and to it's get. really difficult to do we we would show dawn of the dead in the mall every annual event in that theater if if we, if were, approved we were approved to right it, and we we apply every year and but this is a good time to announce that that this year at Living Dead Weekend on Friday night, we're going to screen in the Cinemark Theater in the mall, Night of the Living Dead 90. So with with cool. um, cast introductions. So that's a Friday. That's not been announced yet. This is, uh, you know, an exclusive. We're screening the movie in the mall. This, holy shit. Pardon breaking news. Breaking wow. news. Where is our goddamn breaking news? Wow. We have. Other Who's producing this show? Announcements. I, I, does this really, has, does this end in an out? Is it end at nine or is this an ongoing? How long do we have tonight? We could go till June. Who cares? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We. I mean, we do have other announcements. Will actually happen. Hey, I was going to stay right? for five minutes. We that <laughs> five minutes is not happening. No. So I know. I know well, Jim prepared a bunch of um, talking points about all the different cast reunions we've done over the years, and we didn't get to any of that yet. And I don't know if you if we're going to back up. Um, I'm but sure this we'll have to backtrack theme, a little bit, but we can we can do that. Do you well, want to just get some of the announcements out of the way? And Mr. Mr. Jim decided not to it? show up. Jim, <laughs> we could we can save the announcements for a little longer and 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 go through that some of that stuff, or we can just throw some out there yeah, now. We, we actually have guests from what? every I, one of the movies that we well, haven't announced. I yet. actually probably I 12. actually had a really good question for Kevin and Mandy, sure. um, and. It's inspired by Gary's story because when Gary said the story about the doctor, about how he brought his son to the movie, I'm actually really curious for both of you. How did you get involved in the world of the living dead? Because like I know my story, like we all have a story how we got thrown into the world. What was your first experience with either night, dawn or day? How did it impact both of you? I'll, you know, separate question for both of you. Can I go first? Um, sure, I can go first. I mean, uh <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I didn't make the movie like Gary, so my experience is a little bit different. But um, Gary's exempt from this. <laughs> I don't even so, get a camera on this one. <laughs> oh, 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 I said you're, ask, you're asking Mandy's experience and my experience. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I misunderstood the question. So, so I grew up in the area of Evan City, and I've told the story so many times. But the Evan City Cemetery was my family cemetery, and I had been going to that cemetery before the movie was made there. So um because i am that old and and when they when when the movie was being filmed there people were talking about it it was in the newspapers and stuff that that there's a pittsburgh movie being made in evan city and it's in this cemetery and and so i and i might not have heard about it at the right the right time that it was happening but at some point i was a child and i became aware of it and i thought it was very interesting but i was still a child and too young to see the movie i didn't see the movie until it was on television in the 70s. But when I did, I was all excited because, hey, that's that movie that's like here, you know, it was here. So so I approached it already with like a level of excitement around it. And and it just kind of had a big impact on me. It just stuck because I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I, it wasn't really like anything I had seen before. But then over the years, I would tell people, yeah, they made a movie here. And but the movie grew into this thing where I would see these observations in, in pop culture and other influences. They're like, well, that comes from Night of the Living Dead. This, these creatures that are they're calling zombies now come, come from Night of the Living Dead. All this stuff comes from Night of the Living Dead. And it still was growing. It still was the 70s. And then, then there's Dawn of the Dead and all this <laughs> stuff. And then at some point, everyone knew it came from Night of the Living Dead. But I still was out there trumpeting like, yeah, that's my cemetery. That's my, my, my hometown. So I approached it that way, you know, just like a sense of pride, even though I had nothing to do with it, just, just because it was here. So um, and, and then later, many years later, when I had a, a business and 
collectibles, movie memorabilia business, I thought, well, I guess this is now the time that I, I actually can do what I always want to do, which was tell the world, let's, you know, pay tribute to this in Pittsburgh. That's Pittsburgh. It isn't just steel and sports. It's also zombies. So let's go from there. And that's my exposure. Um, you're, she has an interesting story as well. So uh, my, <laughs> my family's not buried there and I'm, I'm not old enough. Um, so I grew up not not being allowed to watch horror movies, you know, relatively Catholic. Um, you know, if you watch horror movies, you could go to hell. Uh, and when I was in like eighth grade, yeah. You'll be damned yeah. to hell. Yeah. Like I, I sang in the church choir up in the loft and all of the stuff. And, you know, I was really into it. Um, but when we were in like eighth grade, we started, you know, hanging out at one of our friend's houses and we go to the movie rental place and we just get different weird movies movies that our friend's older brother said were cool weird weird old sci-fi movies different stuff and then we just kind of cut up on them and talk over it and kind of see if we could figure out how they did what they did and we were never taking it very seriously we were always talking the whole time and someone got dawn of the dead um and i remember being i remember going like oh no everyone shut up listen this is a real place this isn't a set this is a real place and you can go there you know, and I just, that was the first time I ever really noticed that in a movie about some place that wasn't, you know, something big like Washington, D.C. or an outside location. Um, so, and I'm, I'm not from here. I'm from upstate New York and stuff. So, uh, and then I saw Night of the Living Dead. Uh, we were walking home from school one day and someone threw away on trash night a box of like hand taped tapes, you know, like where you copy tape to tape. And so we took the whole box and oh, it was no. one of the movies that was in it. Right. Um, and you didn't know they were related at that point. And I didn't know they were related at that point. We just took the whole box of tapes. We were like, yay, free tapes. Um, so yeah. So she didn't know that Don that had another movie that, that, that it was sequel. Yeah, I thought it was its own thing. I, I had to reverse, <laughs> reverse engineer it. Um, and then I just kind of, at one point, in life, they uh, they sold the building that I rented an apartment in, and I was getting back the deposit, and I didn't have, you know, a good thing going. And I was like, I'm just going to myself, and you know, uh, one of my other friends were like, we're just going to put it all in. We're gonna. We looked up Pittsburgh. The that's relatively cheap to live here. There's jobs here, and we just put the cats in the van and we drove here. And we were like, we're gonna figure it out when we get there. So that's how I got a job in the mall and. I just started telling everyone that I'm the biggest fan and it was before everyone was on Facebook. So I didn't know if that was real or not. I was just very confident about it. <laughs> because she learned that this movie was made in a real place. She really I did showed just, up in moves just here. moved there yeah. and got a job there. Just to show Cats in a van and then she's out. <laughs> yeah. And then we ran into each other shortly after that. Well, cause she's here living, working in the mall because the movie was filmed in the mall and I'm here, you know, very beginning stages of setting up the, the what would become the museum and we met and we had this in common and i approached her one day and and asked if she would want to have the job that basically is larry's job now which is which is running tours through the mall and she said no way <laughs> and he came into my job and asked me if I'd like to, I don't know, what not work there, work for him. And I, just, I, I was typing and I looked up and just said, like, oh, no, thank you. You know? But so you just walked in and you're like, hey, you're the, the, the tour person job. now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my two second story and then it'll segue into this fine film behind us um, was. I think I was, I was seven years old and we had just moved. Uh, I'm from New York. So we had just uh, got a video store up here. It was called Captain Video, RIP. And um, I was just starting to get into horror. I was like very like 80s cartoon guy. And um, I wanted to dabble into horror because I grew up with like Universal Monsters, but that's not really scary. So my mom had saw, um, shout out, hi mom. Uh, she had saw Night of the Living Dead in theaters when she was a kid and like she loved it. It stayed with her because it was like, you know, a drive-in movie and it was the whole experience. And she loved Night of the Living Dead. And she said to me, um, yeah, we're going to start you with one of my favorites. It's a classic. It's black and white. Um, it's scary, but not like end of the world scary. Like they're not like, it's not like a Jason slasher kind of thing. It's more of like a, a thinking movie. I was like, cool. She's like, it's called Night of the Living Dead. 
Sure. All right, mom, you're, you're in charge here. We got this. So we rent the tape. I go home. I go into the basement. Shout out to all you basement dwellers out there. And uh, I put the tape in. And she, now I, I'm not like crazy. She's telling me, she's like, it's not too scary. It's black and white. Now, the first thing I'm seeing is <laughs> this is a colorized movie. All right, mom, you're crazy. Two <laughs> seconds later, it's Patricia Tolman and I see <laughs> know where this is going. It's Patricia Tolman and um, oh god, I can't think of his name right now. Um, oh, uh, he's gonna kill me. Uh, uh, the other Johnny, uh, Bill, 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 uh, Bill Mosley. Thank you. Uh, getting out of the car, and I'm like, all right, so it's not too scary yet. This brother and sister talking, and out of nowhere, Greg Funk the zombie comes out. Start- I'm scared out of my mind. I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. And then all these like larger than life zombies are coming in. I'm petrified. I never recovered from this freaking movie. <laughs> Three fourths through the movie. I go upstairs. I'm like shaking. I'm like, mom, what the hell? This is what you like. And she's like, yeah, it's great. It's, it's a fun movie. Like it, it's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. It, yeah. It stayed with me for the rest of my life. And here I am now with you guys well, when did and you then, learn that she put in the wrong movie? I, I like halfway through, but it was just, it was so <laughs> scary. And like, it was such an adventure. I didn't want to stop. There's so a long the history movie... of people queuing up the wrong movie when they try to show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh so many times. Well, absolutely. <laughs> At the Strand Theater, we had a fundraiser and everybody, people came in from like Detroit and everything else. It, it, do you remember that at the Strand? Yeah, yeah. that's and, why I brought and, it up because I, I was introing this. Story, yeah, so. <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute, holy shit, you got the wrong movie, and like unfortunately, but it wasn't uh, that wrong movie. It was a different wrong movie. It was the 30th anniversary. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. Scene <laughs> version of the movie, which is a totally different wrong. Version. Right. So. Exactly. Exactly. So I, so I wrap up the movie and I'm like, yo, you're really messed up. Like, why would you like this? <laughs> and she's like, why? What's wrong? So I show her a clip. She's like, that's not my night of the living dead. So we went back to the video <laughs> store and I'm like literally scared out of my mind. And it was my first, like I said, I love this stuff now, but well, there you seven, go. Seven years old. I'm watching, you know, people get their brain blown out. And that, now kids don't care. They got walking dead and stuff. But you know, for a kid back in 1991, it was terrifying. So anyway, we went, we rented, you know, the original Night of the Living Dead. And that's when I fell in love. I was like, yes, this is what I like. This is, you know, perfect, beautiful. And the art, the lighting, everything just about the, the 68 version just like soaked me in. There was just something surreal about it. Mm-hmm. And it, to this day, the 68 is like, you know, but the 1990 was my first exposure and that's kind of what like really started the thing. So now that we're on the topic of Night of the Living Dead 1990, uh, would now be a cool time to maybe yeah, drop I, one I, guess? What I'll say is that that when we Just started one. doing this and we, we have all these different themed reunions when we did, we did Night of the Living Dead a million times and we did Dawn of the Dead several times. And then, you know, we've done some of the other the other things, Day of the Dead and Return of the Living Dead and we did all that. One of the things I, I kind of thought we never really would do is Night of the Living Dead 1990 because sure. I always sort of felt that just like there's a remake of Dawn of the Dead and, and we don't really do that either. It just, I wasn't in tune with that movie personally. So I assumed incorrectly that the rest of the world wasn't either. But we noticed over the years that that there are people out there that saw that movie first and, and, and now you've just proven it that it is. It is. And, 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 and there are a lot of people that love that one. And, right. and I, it just wasn't, it didn't register to me because it's, I, it's a lot of people's favorite. of the Yeah. Movie. And because I watched them in the order, they all came. Don't out. understand that it, at like, all. But. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, well, it, you're, if you're coming from a different point in time, the sensibilities of what is in and what works, works better if you're coming at it from that place in that time going back exactly. when i watch movies that i'm biased I, I, did, I meant that as a joke i just well, mine, really... mine's from trauma <laughs> <laughs> yeah but there I, you I'm go guilty of it too movies that were made before i was born so movies sure. that are made in the 50s i have no I, I have less of an interest in them because they just seem but if they're made in the 60s or 70s oh yeah that's cool that's modern that's modern enough for me but i kind of draw the line at where i was born and i think people that were born in the in the 80s and 90s 
probably to some extent have that going on a little bit too right where you know so so a 1990 movie is now you know it's it's time it's time it's to ancient. celebrate this movie it's yeah. now you know uh, you know an old classic film that people you know are fans of and and so i made a mistake i was wrong because we've been getting all these requests night 90 reunion night 90 reunion. it holds up really and, well i mean they all do really yeah so, so this was the year we did, well actually we were going to do it in 2020 it was going to be the second in, 2020 show which would have been an anniversary year, year but yeah. you know we've already talked about the pandemic in this show tonight so we don't need to revisit all the things that got screwed up from that but but this is a year that it's now coming together so so um so we planned an entire full cast and crew reunion of night 90. we've announced some of them um we've teased some of them um right, but so we'll, hit us with one you know, we'll just go through the main cast we have pretty much the main cast we have we have bill mosley we have tony todd um and you know there's 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 somebody that's that's glaringly missing and come on <laughs> so the lead of the film patricia tallman <laughs> is coming to living dead weekend Woo! this year <laughs> and 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 it almost didn't happen because she's going to be coming she's going to be in europe at the time so because of the delay not having it in 2020 and everything and not sure when we were going to do it you know she's you know doing her own thing and living her life and moving moving temporarily to to england or europe so we're traveling thought, europe so initially we were told it isn't going to work out this year and that was a big disappointment but because i didn't want to do it without the leads but we worked it out and we just worked it out just like several days ago and um and we'll That's be flying unbelievable. From, from england to make it happen so it's so um the other another um big news Big that's news. Like a, that's no where more, the we haven't fuck is yet. our, excuse <laughs> my language, where is our breaking news sign? Who we have one off the ball on the breaking oh, news? Oh, yeah. Sign? We need like a ticker. Right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we got something screen? going here. Yeah. Yeah. I need a flashing light. So, I need a desk. If so you don't have, have Barbara, a breaking Barbara, news what's up, man? desk, it's what the hell good are you? We need all I can bring a mobile van into this thing. We can't get a flashing breaking news sign yeah. all right i'll head down we'll, we'll, we'll start wiring the truck up come on man let's get it together so of course we have tom savini who directed the film and we have we have you know um um ben and we have we have johnny and now we have our barbara um and the actor who's played tom um william butler um we are awesome. here to announce that he will also be here this year at living dead weekend um and that's exciting. That's awesome. um, and we have a long roster of, of announcements from all the other movies, too. But perhaps we just, you know, roll those out the regular way on Facebook. Sure. Um, you got a couple we're months still to go. We're going to be having <laughs> always. We always we bring in people from night. We bring in a lot of people from dawn, you know, people from day. So it's not. We're not doing an all night ninety show. We're right, doing a night right, ninety. Right. We have significant really, actors from you know. Dawn of the Dead yet to announce. Um, we'll be. I'd say I, my week. announcement has. I haven't heard anything about me being there. Nope. You're on Special the list. Special guest announcement. <laughs> night talk exclusive. Gary Steiner. He's coming. <laughs> And I'll be there in the mobile van. At the beginning of this broadcast, I, I had an idea to have a have a, a wheel, a spinning ticker wheel that had all the different movies on it, and then whatever one it landed on, I would announce a guest for each film because we actually have at least two guests from Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, uh, Land of the Dead. We've got oh, yeah. we've got guests from all those films yet to announce. I'd say in the next week, we're just gonna like roll them all out a few a day. So be watching the the, the, the Facebooks and the and our website, and um, we'll get them all out there. Kevin, um, you're killing some guys in the in the comment section here. We're getting a lot of. Is there any Dawn of the Dead? Dawn of the Dead. Uh, can is. we yeah, can we more. at least get one confirmation? One. I'm not I'm not asking for an exclusive. Are we besides <laughs> Ken? Are maybe possibly one more lead from Dawn? Oh, uh, we're not going to have another lead from Dawn this year. Okay. I have to I have to disappoint there. Um, no, no, working. no disappoint. Everyone from Dawn's you know, amazing. Um, this year we're just going with Ken, um, but we will definitely have 
the others on other years. For um, sure. Yeah, because I, I got a lot of people asking here about, like, a lot of people asking about Flyboy. And it's like, you know, we, we know that that might not happen. Um, we asked. But, you know, if it, if it could be done, I would do it. It's never that I yeah. don't want to do it. It's never that the invite's not out there. From what I understand, sure. he hasn't done an appearance for anyone in years. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He, he's a hard autograph to get, guys. I'm, I'm just There's telling everyone. There's some reasons like, why he can't do physical appearances. Correct. So, yeah. So, um, unfortunately. But, yeah, he's... He, He's aware that he's invited, and his agent is aware. We just aren't sure. able to like work that out. But he he is um, a rare autograph. And I mean, if anyone's going to get these great guests, it's you guys. I mean, you guys had uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys had the only ever signing from Carol Wayne from Night of the Living Dead. That's the yes. new yeah, yeah, right. yeah. That was in Evan City. That that's an interesting story too because we had requests for her <laughs> without anybody knowing her name. Just requests for the actress yeah. that, that that played the. I guess what people call the nude ghoul now. Yeah. And and nobody really exactly knew how to get a hold of her. And we had all these leads over the years where we kept thinking we were going to get it, get it straightened out. Um, a customer came into the museum once and said that he, he used to be good friends with her. And yeah. Gave us a phone number. Didn't seem like it was working. And then, and then Joe Shelby, who's, in, you know, everyone knows Joe Shelby from sure. Dawn of the Dead, had thought it had a phone number that worked and gave it to us at, Turned out it was the same phone number, and it seemed like it wasn't current either. I, we had all these dead ends, and, and some of you know some of Gary's um, crew were working on some of them too, I believe. And, and, and yeah, Sam Chris and was. And, Chris was. And, and 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 we're almost ready to completely give up. And then I don't remember who it was that, that came through again one more time and said, "This is who." It, I think it was related to Joe Shelby again, saying like, "I'm positive <laughs> I spoke to her. Is this number?" So we're like, well, it's the same number. We keep getting told it's this the same phone number. So I called another time, and I, and she finally answered, and and we worked it out. Um, I don't know if she's going to be the kind of a guest that wants to do any future ones. She she just wanted to try out one. So, um, but again, we'd love to be able to bring her back. She was lovely. Yeah. Now I gave a... up my table. I gave up my table. Um, <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. right. That was the last event we did in Evan City before the pandemic. That would have been the fall of 2019, I guess. Yeah. Well, I gotta, I gotta say that uh, my first ever, uh, you know, Living Dead weekend was last year. Actually, that's where I met Gary and how this all came together. So I, I guess you know, I have you guys to thank for all of this, really. Um, but what's what's crazy is I like I, I've always you know been to conventions. Um, the first convention I ever was at was a Chiller Theater, um, and it was just to me, Judith O'Day, like to me, cause like, you know, Night of the Living Dead is everything. It's like, all right. So that was the only time I'm like, I'm never going to go to another convention, whatever. 2001 years later, here we are. But I have never been to anything like a Living Dead weekend. It was so like immersive and just it, even just walking through your museum, at, at, it just mind blowing. And anyone who hasn't been there, Fly in from Germany, Guam, Egypt, wherever you're at, get to Living Dead Museum and check that out. Like Kevin and Mandy's spot is just mind blowing. It is so amazing. And for a diehard fan like me to walk through there, I'm like mind blown, you know? And I'm like, I want that prop. I want that prop. I want that prop, you know? <laughs> and we do have like at least two more exhibit rooms that are under construction. So we have a couple, couple things up our sleeves to, to, Hopefully we'll have at least something new to unveil at Living Dead Weekend this year. I'm going to put you guys on the spot for two seconds here. Uh, what is each of your, uh, and I'm going to include Gary in on this. Uh, when you walk through the museum, what's the one prop that you walk past that just, every time you look at it, your mouth just drops and you go, yep, I love that thing. Like the one prop. Uh, no pressure. Right. Mine's, where you gonna say this? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with the elevator from Dawn of the Dead because yep. because it was it's an elevator. It's not like you can just <laughs> carry it away. I mean, obtaining all the different pieces of the elevator, which didn't even all happen like all at once, even yeah. um, it was already a, you know, and for years we had pieces of it with no idea how to like exhibit it or show it. And we, we made several attempts to figure out some way to do it in Evan city and sure. it just never quite worked. But, but um, they basically JC Penney's was, was torn down so they could build this new movie theater. And at that point, you know, um, several 
fans got permission, you know, to purchase some of the, the scraps from the, the demolition site. And, and so different pieces went to different fans. And, and I was always the guy that would get stuck with the big things that nobody had any way to move because I already was in the mall and I already had a location in the mall to shuffle them off to. And so, so lots of little cool parts went to other people. And then I ended up with like things like that no one could carry, like the doors and the, yeah. and the ceiling and big parts. But, but then there were a lot of details that we still didn't have to like put it all back together. But then over the years, you know, we were able to purchase back some of those pieces from some of the other people that had them to like reconstruct this elevator. And it's, like, you know, almost like identical form. That's cool. The wall yeah, that that stuff. that that stood out too when I walked through that. It's just this giant elevator and you have Flyboy in there and it's like it, it just draws your attention. You know, it's it's incredible. Um, and Mandy, what about your yourself? I mean, I. I love it all, um, but I think the thing that's really important to me is our handprint wall, because it's Same. a lot of people own props that are really cool and maybe more pricey than some of the stuff we have. A lot of people own things like one sheets that are really signed up, but I feel like when I look at the handprint wall, I'm like, wow, this really represents sure. everything we did, you know? Um, yeah. You know, I, I, it's irreplaceable. The handprint wall was at everything we did. We moved it around. It was. It, it, it was, was in, at everything. It was in Evan City in two thousand and nine, the with the rainy year, just by itself in one of the pavilions, not getting rained on, and that's where it yep. really started. Those were the first handprints that went on it, and then it moved to the mall, and then it moved to the mall at another location, and then we took it. We took it all the way to Chicago. We to took get, it to a convention to and brought David. it up two people's that's booth. how we got david m game that must like, be a pain in the ass to move around but we i mean we did it it was a it's a piece of paneling that's four feet by eight well there's several pieces but each piece was a four foot by eight foot section so we took <laughs> one section to chicago so so it just keeps expanding and then we've had to add a couple of new pieces of paneling to it now to get we run out of space in room yeah so uh, Facebook comment here from Brandon. I am always smitten with the radio playing the news reports, which is actually behind Kevin. Um, I have one of those, and and we got to hook Gary up with one of those too. Like we like you know we all yeah. need that radio. The old it, it'll find me. It'll find me. That's I'm looking for you. I'm looking there, for you. In the beginning, I it'll thought this was going to be a hard thing to find, but now I keep finding them all the time. You know, and I, yeah, they're everywhere. Ours technically, doesn't work. We it doesn't work as a radio, but we we sure. we got it in re reset it digitally to like have a trigger so it plays when people walk up so when when i got mine um i didn't know if it worked or not so i brought it and i had all the guys sign it and savini was like looking at it he's like does it work i'm like i don't know so he just plugs it in and it like two <laughs> seconds later the fire alarms are going off and we're like was it the radio but it wasn't because of that it was you know someone called in a bomb threat so that was a good time but um <laughs> let me see what other comments we can oh i'm sorry gary and what was your gary what what prop? I, I, I don't really honestly have a favorite. I, I, to me, it's the overall experience of it. You know, it's just, and, 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 and again, compared to Evan city, there's just so much more room. And I remember walking through it with Kevin the first time and it was like, wow, this is like a real museum. Yeah. You know, this is so, so I, I mean, I, for me, it's just the overall effect. I don't really have a, specific thing that i'm always i'm always intrigued with heinzman who we see behind you there i mean uh, 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 that that it's that's always a, a friendly face that's a good <laughs> tribute to him he, he was like one of the nicest people in the world too like he's yeah. just amazing um I remember I was at a convention once and I didn't even know he was going to be there. And he was just in the, in the costume. Yeah. And I, I was like, Oh my God. And he's like, come over, take pictures. I was like, all right. So like everyone from night of the living dead is just like the nicest people. But um, for, for people at home right now and Facebook and anyone watching the, the living dead museum doesn't just focus on the Romero films too. It, it is the whole history of, you know, zombies, horror, things like that. There's props from everything, posters from everything, exhibits, explanations, Seriously, no matter what you're into, there's something for everyone. Definitely check it out. Um, and we have an yeah. exhibit that's sort of the history of the Monroeville Mall itself. We yeah. want to, you know, like touch on that a little bit. And there's more. We have some things that are planned to go in that room that had, didn't make it out yet, too. Because because um, it's important. The mall itself is a, is a big part of why this all works and comes together. So I wanted to, like, 
Patriot. Don't you guys even have like part of the Evil Dead cabin in there or the uh, the yeah. workshop? Yeah, we have that. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> It's the Evil Dead 2's cabin doors and windows and roofs and stuff, and then the work shed from the back of behind the cabin where Ash gets his chainsaw. We have that too. That's that's crazy. Like I didn't know that was in there when I was walking through. <laughs> like I didn't, I couldn't stop staring. I, it really like makes you like a kid in a candy store. Like if if it's your first time in there, I was in it. Um, I was in the original. I've only ever been to Monroeville twice, which is total crime. the The first time was an absolute accident i think it was 2011 and they were just about to tear down jc penny and since i was a kid i wanted to do since i was like 15 i wanted to do the uh the mall slide i'm sure yeah. you guys have done that you guys are guilty of it <laughs> well the, the very last person to ever do it before they tore it apart is sitting here it's not me, me. it's her yeah. <laughs> congratulations man dude that's fantastic i couldn't do it for years because i i valued being a respectable key holder in the mall too much i wouldn't <laughs> risk it right i we but, never did it until but did you do it it was shut down and there was there was a thing and uh i i, I now you know who's gonna come arrest me now but uh they they said um you know don't do it don't do it on facebook like you know with like the 1990 night the living dead house they say don't go on the property don't take pictures yeah. don't even look right. the owners in the eyes they will kill you so it's like all right don't do it now with the 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 jc penny mall they said yeah the the slide <laughs> don't do it there's a spike all bless right. you they said there's a spike at the end or something it's gonna hit you so don't do it fine so I told my friend I was staying with at the time, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm just I'm just going to go, I'm going to do it, and we're going to get the hell out of the mall. So we got there early, and I had no idea, like, absolutely no clue. You guys were having, um, I think it was a zombie walk, because Sharon was there in her nurse outfit. Yeah, and yeah that, was, uh, that, was, that was the crawl in the mall. Yeah. Okay, so I think it was like 2011 or 2012, mm -hmm. and everybody and like all the security was like hanging out with you guys. And I'm like, all right, now's my chance to get away with, you know, total murder. I ran as like the second or third customer into JC Penny. I'm like, I don't care whatever they could fight me. I don't care. I ran up the thing, slid down the thing. I told my friend, hold the camera. I, I, I got to document this. I, I did it. And I ran out of there like the ultimate warrior, like 2000 miles an hour. <laughs> They couldn't catch me, and I was just done, and and that was my day. And then I, I casually strolled back into the mall an hour later with like my hat tilted. I'm like, who was that guy? You know. So there was a time th that they did glue some like humps or bumps, yeah, obstacles in the center to prevent that. But I don't know why they didn't stay. It was like those deterrents they have for against skateboarding, you know, like the little yes. yeah metal nubs. But they must have just glued them on and they fell off because they didn't stay. <laughs> <laughs> people must have just slid down and one by one like knocked them off but if but, they, um, if they were still there and caused me a hospital visit it would have been worth it because you know <laughs> it's a once in a lifetime thing and who cares you know you got to have fun with it that's what these movies are about they're just they're fun somebody says larry is part of the escalator larry does have part of the escalator he was one of the people he was one that, of the people there that helped day. us haul yeah. it all out well the museum has a big chunk of the escalator in it right right but one of the larry's rows. got so. At least a few stairs. Yeah. But does Mandy still slide down it, or is that uh, there's not enough to still yeah, slide that down? That part, that part is one big giant piece of metal that was anchored into the foundation of the building. It was no way to get that part. But so, so she's the last um, person to slide down it as a whole piece, not you know like individual well, no one, pieces. She's the last person to slide down ever, as far as unless some construction workers, yeah, unless were some people came in afterwards. demolishing it and did it afterwards. But like the, after Doubt that it. happened, they went right to tearing the place down, and no more access was allowed. So oh, oh no, I did it because it was my birthday. There's a video of me going, "Hey, my name is Mandy, and it's my yeah. birthday." Yeah, you, right? I think you can find it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna definitely have to dig up that clip. Um, <laughs> Let's see here. We're getting a lot. Larry, Larry was in full costume, full SWAT, yeah, Larry was SWAT dressed gear up. costume doing it on that same day. That's on YouTube, I believe. You know yeah. what? I would not have done it if Larry didn't convince me that it's now or never. I was really, I was worried I was going to get hurt. I was worried I was going to break my face. And I didn't know him very, very well at the time. He was like, I'm going to stand at the bottom. and I'm going to make sure nothing happens to you. And I, I wouldn't have done it if Larry wasn't really telling me that I shouldn't miss out on it. Well, but it was really fun, right? Yeah, it was also really scary. <laughs> I, I was, was just like, yeah, I'm going to hurt my bag. I don't want to do it. But somehow I was, I was 
pushed into doing it too. So. I was so scared I was going to get stuck halfway and then all these people were going to be walking past me and I'm slowly creeping my way down. Like, how'd I well, get here? I, don't I mean, know. you did it. You're, you, of all, all of us, you did it for real. Like, the store yeah. was open. There were customers. Oh. We did it when, like, everything was, like, shut down and we were allowed to. So there's no thrill in that. So. <laughs> I was I was scared out of my mind and like I mean like I always wanted to like I didn't even know that there was tours um you know obviously I went to the cemetery and uh, that was before um you know Gary had the um the chapel restored because it was like collapsing the roof was hanging down and just it was nightmarish to look at and that's why I can't wait to see what you know you guys have done in person it's it's gorgeous just from Gary driving around it's it looks beautiful um, someone asked a question. Let's answer this here. Uh, will Bill Butler be selling gas pump keys from the 1990 movie? I don't know. That's a good. That's a good question. Yeah, we don't really know what all he's going to be doing there. Um, he, we really just only found out that he's coming last night. It's yeah. really a last minute, a last one of the last things that I worked on last night. So, um, and and we we wanted to play around with the, like the year 1990 a little bit, and we. In looking at other 1990 horror movies, because we did that last time with 1985, where we did Day of the Dead and Return of the Dead. That was awesome. And we're like, I always thought, what a weird year! These two different zombie movies that are both sort of sequels from Night of the Living Dead, and different for different reasons, different ways, were released at the same time, and that was that was an odd odd year. So we played around with that, and we said, well, we need to focus on the reunion supposedly at the same time too, and just confuse everybody. Which one do you want to go? I even wanted to screen both the movies at the same exact time, but I was told that would be a bad idea. But, it, it, but I like to play with those kinds of themes. And then this year's 1990. So what other 1990 movies can we play with? And I noticed that 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 Leatherface, which is not a zombie movie at all, but Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Three, has Ken Forey in it, who was already coming, and William Butler in it, who was in 1990. And and the guy who plays Leatherface, you know, had been asking already to, to come to our event other years. And even though we always said didn't really fit the theme, I thought, you know, maybe it fits this year. We'll do another 1990 movie. So William Butler will be one of the only people representing two 1990 movies at the show. So that is absolutely incredible. Uh, someone wrote uh, the uh, legend has it the uh, the bumps on the um, escalator are called Roger bumpers. So okay. they will bump <laughs> Roger off. <laughs> Roger bumpers. Roger bumpers. So he doesn't. I don't slide know when they the were escalator. there. They were only there for a short time. It yeah, was I have to know a little bit about the history of that name. Roger bumpers. Uh, yeah, people are freaking out about the Texas Chainsaw thing too. I mean, that's that's cool. Like you, the, Texas Chainsaw Three was like, I'll, I'll probably get hell for this, but that was like the last really good one. And like Texas Chainsaw 3 is just brutal. So people are going to eat that up. But, you know, last year's event was just mind blowing. Like, I, I don't know. Are you guys going to be doing it uh, like a year theme every year or it's just um, the it last wasn't start. It didn't start out that way. It started out because we, like I said, this unique dynamic with those two movies in 1985. Sure. But then I kind of like it. I kind of like little goofy themes and not and not just doing Well, we got somebody from everything, you know. How do we connect the dots so it makes sense? Because you can't just do the same thing every year. So, so I don't have the answer to that, but um, we might revisit it someday. I mean, it's I always want, good. I think we've had enough years where I mean, I we're always night of, night of the living dead centric. We're always dawn of the dead centric. But I feel like sometimes we get too far away from the dawn of the dead stuff. Um, and I just don't, you know, I feel like some of these people like how we had said like scotty and you know galen and stuff we haven't brought in for a few years and originally if i couldn't bring them in this year i want to bring them in next year yeah you know so, yeah we're so never tell kevin to let yeah, me do we're it. never gonna have <laughs> dawn of the dead reunions when we do it in the mall and we're never going to not have night of the living dead reunions when we do it in Devon city that's the core to it all like we're never just gonna randomly have an event here where we're just doing, you know, all these other horror movies and leaving out the ones that are filmed there. It's never going to be. You you haven't read the new licensing agreement for Night of the Living Dead, have you? Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, no? I, I got it? him. April Fool's. <laughs> <laughs> You're one day early. No. Um, well, you know, if, if Two no, days if, early, right? If Oh, is it? Oh, it is tonight at midnight, I guess. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. If... I didn't, I didn't if 
if numbers see, and I, I'm, I'm going to try to fish a comment here, but you know, you can tell me to shut up at any point, you know, if, uh, you know, if numbers do play a thing where like last year was 85, this year is 1990. And if we're playing the numbers game, I know of a nice number is 55. And there seems to be a movie. Uh, I think Gary, you may have heard of it. Um, it's turning 55 next year. So, you know, if you guys want to play around with that next year, you know, yeah, it's true. We do have another anniver big anniversary coming up. We haven't really, uh, we haven't even thought about it yet. I th I think about it and then I just go, Ugh. so yeah, that might be a good time to launch, you know, the the Evan City something area. back in Evan City because we have some ideas on how to do that, do do a return to Evan City a little bit differently than we've done before. So that would be the coolest thing ever. Absolutely coolest thing ever. I talk I like the idea of I like the idea of of like a big huge tent that you could actually those kind that you can heat, you know, to put it back by the um, what is it the American Legion or where, wherever in that big field back there. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that well, was around a bunch of times too. I'm not sure why it never really went anywhere, but right. Well, well I thought the coolest thing ever actually last year. Um, I, I think Kevin, you, Kevin, you and Mandy, you guys were behind that. Were the um, it was like a barbecue outside the mall. That was like just like the most brilliant thing ever. <laughs> like everyone was having a great time. So now, if you guys did do something, I, I mean, I'm just suggesting people in the comments could roast me, you know. Uh, but if you guys did do something in Evan City, why don't you get uh, an old Chevy truck, burn it up, and you know, have another barbecue with pieces right. of Tom and Judy? Why not? Let's do this. You know, I, I believe those ideas of bounced around before too <laughs> really okay cool i'm so glad the barbecue was well received because <clears throat> it was born out of the idea that we you know you you build your event you know a half a year a year before it happens and it was the most covid safe thing that i could do is say like let's put it outside you know and it's it's fourth of july weekend so like let's give them like hamburgers and it, i'm really right. glad that no one saw through that like it's <laughs> Everyone yeah. that had a good time. The Fourth of July yeah, thing cool. was interesting too because that that was our makeup date. Well, it was I don't know. We we moved our date a few times, but yeah. because of COVID. But but when I looked at the, the dates that were available to reschedule a Return of the Living Dead reunion, Return of the Living Dead takes place on January. I mean July third. Yeah. That's the big yeah. Return of the Living Dead day, July third. And, and I thought this is brilliant. We'll we'll move it to this day. And it'll look like we did it, like because that's the, the day of that movie, but it's also just a day that works with COVID and everything, because that was July was when everything sort of opened back up and and, and yeah. everything came together. And then finally, got, I could never do anything on July third because nobody would have come to it because like fourth. <laughs> but we we got away with it. We finally did a Return of the Living Dead on Return of the Living Dead Day. That now I want to do a Night of the Living Dead. This is the other idea I've had that I've never done. Oh, yeah. I've always wanted to take Night of the Living Dead Day, which is the day the clocks move forward in the spring, and do something on that day and make that Night of the Living Dead Day. But now the country's taking it away from us. We're yeah, right. All right. No more. Oh. <laughs> so I, it seems like we won't You have snooze, you lose. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and it's like, well, no, it's the, there's a, a, a calendar in the background of um, – what the hell is it in the farmhouse? It's, the it's December. Dead. It's October. Yeah. Dead, yeah. Yeah. Well, day has that, but in the farmhouse for night, there's oh. a, a calendar behind Ben. And I think it, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong. It's, it's December behind Ben. And it, there's a certain day that it's crossed off until. Right. I don't know. I so, somebody, don't somebody remember. look that up yeah. later. Uh, someone in the comments wrote Linnea Quigley's chainsaw workout was really fun last year. Anything with Linnea is fun. She's awesome. She's so cool. That that that's a callback to when we used to do goofy things, I guess. But um, you know, yeah, you it, know, I I don't want to give people. I like other conventions. We go to other conventions. We were vendors at other conventions for years. But I want people to feel like I, I actually tried really hard to come up with something different and interesting for them. So well, the, the but that was her idea. We we were going to do a brilliant, a more traditional Return of the Living Dead type theme party. And I don't know why, why, why you decided that no, do this instead. But maybe you do remember. But but it was completely I, her idea. I have a suspension of disbelief <laughs> about the ideas I come up with. Like a lot of people will 
stop their mind and say that can't be done. And I'll kind of wait until people tell me it can't be done. <laughs> you know, so I'll be like, hey, this is rad. We should do this. L let's just do it. You know, she was well, awesome. Don't stop because those ideas were amazing. And like I said, the 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 barbecue and everything and, and the Linnea thing was just brilliant. Like that was so much fun. And uh, just going to get to two more questions here before we start winding on down. Um, somebody had a question. If we could share any details about June's VIP mixer. Sure. Um we're we're not going to do the barbecue. <laughs> That's what we just yeah. talked about. We're we're not doing that format. Um, um, we're we're going back to the, the the original format, which is which is in the in the courtyard that's now known as Romero Court, where the George Romero bust is. That's we're going to have the, v, the 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 meet and greet there when the malls close Saturday evening, um, with this with all the celebrities there and catered food and drinks and such. So so if you've been to it. Every any year except last year, you pretty much know the format. We're going back to the original one. Got it. Um, another great question here: uh, Can we have a redneck brunch on Sunday morning in honor of <laughs> Night of the Living Dead 1990? That's a great idea. It's it's Let's not. We just talked about it. I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, Outside the mall, we can hang zombies from the tree and you know shoot at them with paintballs and why not? Well, like the the year we did, them and they're us did a Father's Day brunch, right? Right. Because we Father's Day. one, right? We always do these themed weird Goofy things. things. So our our weekend was in June on Father's Day weekend, and the Father's Day segment of Creep Show, and we were like, wow, we have to have a, a, a an event on Father's Day. How's that going to hurt us? And we're like, wait a minute. We're doing creep show. We'll just make that part of the theme. And so we did that. We did the Father's Day brunch on Father's Day with the Father's Day cast. So so that was another. Um, but yeah, the redneck thing, Do we it. actually looked at that house. They, they were The house was for sale oh, recently. Yeah, we and Mandy and I house. went there to see like feasibility of like, can we buy that house and do something like that with it? You know, The 90 house? Yeah. The, the redneck no, house. No, the, the, uh, the red house. the dead redneck scene house. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, it's yeah. a house that's there, and, and, and it, it recently, there's a new owner now, and then recently was sold. But but we thought about doing something like the redneck party thing at the property of the house. That'd be cool, because you even got the guy who, like, bandages himself up, too, and everything. And Yeah, uh, well, um, that's um Wild Bill um, um Lasco, Las yeah. and he's, yeah, yeah. he's, I guess, this year, and yeah. He's cool, um, man. He's cool. And then the uh, airport is sort of, you know, we did that airport. I, I know Jim wanted us to touch on this too. We, one of the things that we did two shows back that probably won't ever happen again, it was a once in a lifetime thing, was when we put um, the airport zombie, Paul Musser, and Jim Crutt, the helicopter zombie, back in the airport in full makeup, um, photo ops in the locations where their scenes were filmed. Um, again, the, the touch tone, the thing that I think that makes our stuff work in a different way that, that not that other people's things don't work, but we can do a smaller event that works well because we can play around with these locations and bringing people sure. in the same people that made the movies with the people who are in the movies, in the locations of the movies, putting the makeup back on in the same places. These are the kinds of things that, that we can do that's unique. Um, Any of that this year or? You know, last year with COVID, we kind of backed away. A lot of people um, didn't want to do a lot of the makeup thing. And, and I, when I started the plan this year, we still weren't really sure how COVID was going to play a role in it. So yeah. we hadn't really pushed anybody into, you know, you, stuff, we want yeah. you to do makeup, you know, this year. So there's a, there's a, there's a couple ideas that we could do something. Um, cool. But I know it, we're not going to be able to use the airport this year. I know that. Right. So, um so basically just keep following what we're announcing because a lot of things are still completely being planned and put together day to day. We're working on it every day. So we have some more things to announce. All right. That's, that's amazing. And we got some really good suggestions for you just before we wrap up, we got people chanting redneck brunch, redneck brunch, redneck brunch. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they, no. they want they want to have a tricycle or bike race at the loading dock. That's a pretty cool suggestion. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. Now, here's one that I, I would like to jump in on. Uh, a pie fight. Can we do this? Can we get oh, going? Oh, we talked fight? about that for so many years. Yeah? Get we, do it. we tried to do the pie fight 
a million uh, times in the early years. I don't want to make a mess of but, the mall. I need never, them to love me. But you did get hit by a pie. Uh, but it wasn't here in the mall. It was at Horror Realm. Well, I'll bring yeah. the seltzer bottle. It was here. Yeah. It was, yeah, we, we tried. I don't Some of the messier ideas we, aren't, we, aren't the we best. We pied Joe yeah. Shelby and Nick Taylor in the yeah. face for an ad yeah. that no one ever saw, I think. That's why we're like going to just celebrate Night of the Living Dead. It's not as dirty. Is anybody interested in, in, in actually being in the motorcycle that has the sidecar that drove through the mall? Would you like to like um, be in that motorcycle in the mall? On that motorcycle? That's Take my cool. money right now. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't get I'm, I'll come right now. Let's go. Yeah. Well, it actually runs, too. So. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. That's <laughs> awesome. Doing? Thing. We're not going to drive it in the mall. We're not going to drive it in the mall. <laughs> we uh, I mean, we did not? acquire it, but and, we are going to um, we are going to have it on hand. You know, and yeah. it needs like some restorative work. So, but yeah, we're doing that. The All big right. things that are too big for other people to buy because you know their family will hate them and say, "Where the hell are you going to put that?" <laughs> so. <laughs> So, so in wrapping up, uh, Kevin and Mandy, where can people who are, you know, just chiming in from like YouTube and things, like, where can they follow you guys, especially for all the, the living dead weekend news? Um, well, there's a, there's a traditional website, which is the living dead weekend.com. You got to remember the, the, and then there's Facebook, which is living dead museum. There's also a Facebook group called living dead weekend. Um, those are the main places. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys heard it here. Uh, and if not, we will, as always, uh, over at Image 10 on Instagram, Twitter, which is Daz, running that like a boss, and you know all the Facebook groups and everything. We will post links, uh, image10.com, which is featured below. Uh, I guess we're going to wrap up today. Uh, anything else you guys want to just jump in at the last second? Gary? I promise uh, I will announce three more guests tomorrow. So now I have three to That means we got to have another night talk. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. We have to do this again. <laughs> Traditional announcement online. But um, live from the Night of the Living Dead mobile band or <laughs> combat. Night night mobile. Wait, was it okay? Night talk mobile unit. That's what's flashing on the screen right now. So that's a tongue twister for me. <laughs> night talk mobile unit. Yeah, I know it is. Night talk mobile night unit. Talk mobile. Night talk mobile unit. Well, I wanted it to be night talk breaking news mobile unit. <laughs> I, I, I think without the breaking news, it's like real, like a chump. You know, everybody has a breaking news desk. There you go. <laughs> SNL and, used to uh, do a sketch where um, Al Franken would like be on a location where he had all the things he needed to broadcast from live. And he was a one man unit. And it was a joke because that doesn't work. Like you can't, you have to have a cameraman and all that stuff. And he didn't. But you're that now. We have all that now. It's all, you're doing it. <laughs> That's all Gary. Um, I'm the crew here. <laughs> do, you, do you see what's flashing at the bottom of the screen? I, I, I did. I did. I did all really want to just give a shout out to to the boys behind the scenes here because oh, I think they've absolutely. they've done a really excellent job tonight of uh, producing the show and making it fun and uh, doing little things like these silly crawls and all that stuff. It, it's where we're going with this, you know. Again, I'll I, I like to promote Night Talk because. It was actually Jim's idea to to do night talk back in the pandemic when when people couldn't get out and and actually see fan, uh, you know see celebrities and 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 so we were going to do it as a whole other thing and then something got in the way and uh, and so it's our mission to to do this regularly we're I, I i we haven't set a date yet but we're, we have another one planned in the very near future so oh and there's um, something really really cool planned for that uh oh i can't even hint at it can i no, no. no. not yet no <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there's <laughs> something... i'm the only one that gets the hint actually actually <laughs> Two people know about it, but I'll, I'll give a little tiny hint. It's something that hasn't been done in 55 years. That's all I could say. <laughs> all I could say. It has not been done in 55 years. And when I got to see it for the first time, or I was like a kid in a candy store, freaking out, grinning ear to ear. I was full bug out mode. So, all right. Well, that's next month on Night Talk. So you heard it here next month. What? <laughs> Yeah, and somebody made a comment to me because I was um, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm always, you know, feeling like I'm sure you guys do the same thing. Always feeling like you got to reinvent yourself and you got to, you know, and, and so it's, it, but it's interesting because there's God only knows there's a million different places you can get night living dead information these days, which is really wonderful, including our website. Um, you know, but, um, I uh, know I lost my train of thought. Um, I, what the hell was I getting say? info from the, getting info from the mobile unit? Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, no, it, it, it's a lost cause. The harder you try, <laughs> breaking it news, just is, <laughs> breaking, yeah. news. <laughs> breaking news. He can't remember it. <laughs> now, top that. Well, no, you know, I think we were just, we were just 11. Giving, we were just giving a real quick shout out to all the guys behind the scenes tonight. So, Steven, yeah. David, you guys. Pull this together. You are the guys in charge. Well, you make this look beautiful. Thank you guys so much. Well, well, that was the whole thing, and and I, I, that that was part of it all. And and I think that um, you know we're we're you know I could I could say that number one, you know, part of the reason that I never came back to it and said it's time to you know turn this over to somebody else that's really going to do it is that I got very involved in the mechanics of image 10 and they, and, 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 and just the whole straightening up of, of, of that. And, um, you know, trying to, trying to get, trying to get a good foundation for it, which, uh, you know, we've been very rewarded in, in our efforts there. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'm all, first of all, um, this is this is something that anybody can do you know anybody can come and watch this i would like to get it on a semi-regular basis anyway where look well how, what did this take it, it, it took absolutely nothing but a couple of hours of our time and look and i just know people are gonna it's all people are gonna talk about that's all people want particularly from night of the living dead and so i had asked the question just put it on my Facebook. How often should you change your banner? Just that was it. And, and, you know, most people came back and, and said, well, you should change your banner whenever you feel like changing your banner. And I go, well, that's not really any help, you know? Uh, and, and I was asking that question because the living dead fest Facebook page that doesn't get i mean it gets tons of traffic but it doesn't get a whole lot of production and and i was you know going through the whole thought of maybe we should just close that down get rid of that as a source and get everybody to go over to the the george a romero official page um but but i, I um somebody made a, a response that I thought was really, really, really important. And their response was, and it was Judy Hennessy. Um, I think I have her name right. <laughs> um, and she said, well, you know, when you were doing the fundraiser, <clears throat> it, it was very engaging. You know, it, it, it was an engaging event. And, and then... Um, now you're just sort of telling us things, you know, there we're, we're, we can like it and we could comment on it, but it's not engaging, you know? And, and I think that's a really, really, really valid, um, uh, situation. So I think anything we can do with night talk sure. is, uh, is to engage the fans. These, the, the, like, this is an informational one. But we're going to start to have more night talks, I hope. Kevin and Mandy, fans. jump in at any time. Join us at any time. You guys are always welcome, you know. No, no we're happy to be you. there. I just I wanted to say Kevin, you guys was great. First place, and I'm, you know, I'm, it's a pleasure to be a part of it. So. Well, having you guys. It's adult. Great. It's very adult. <laughs> Next time we'll so, get some cocktails better. and call it a day. But um, so. I guess we're going to wrap up uh, everyone uh, from Gary's, uh, you know, night news mobile unit there to, uh, you know, Kevin and Mandy over at somebody's got to train him and what it is. I, I mean, know. come on. This is our mon moniker. 
I'm getting fired. I'm done. <laughs> What's it coming up as now? Night Talk what? Breaking News Mobile Unit. <laughs> I don't even remember my own we name. Laugh about this, but someone's going to show up having made themselves the shirt and give it to you, Gary. No. <laughs> right, well, so I expect that. I mean, I, I really expect it. Let's let's nervous. see. Talk about fan engagement. Come on, <laughs> help if me someone, out with it. If someone shows up to Gary's table with a night talk breaking news mobile unit shirt, <laughs> I'll pay for the autograph. You know what the hell? Let's do this. You know. Oh no, they'd get it for free. They we have a gift shop just, right around the corner here, money. And right behind this wall. Maybe we should. Maybe that's. <laughs> yeah, we're no, I think it. I, I think it has to come from a fan. It it, it it has to come from a fan. That's the only way that I can follow through with my fan engagement. Someone idea. just wrote, so. "I ordered the shirt already from Custom Inc." <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Somebody yeah, ordered a shirt. You need the fan engagement, Gary, yeah. that you're sharing with people. It's already happening. <laughs> that's that's unfreaking real. That's hysterical. So some someone just go out and Photoshop this like big combat van news thing with radar dishes and everything. And, you know, we'll, we'll Photoshop Gary in the driver's seat. I, I, can I make can I make the mobile unit now? A tax deduction? That's a thing. <laughs> is, this, hey. is this like a business deduction here? And, and one day, when when you're ready for a new car, it will get donated to the Living Dead Museum. There you go. There you go. Well, we'll auction this one off. Yeah. There you go. Well, uh, guys, we just, it was a real pleasure. And, yeah, and like, you yeah, so two much. hours later, you know, I was going to be here for five minutes, but it was so engaging <laughs> and so fun to just be with you guys and throwing my two cents worth here and there mostly just comic relief but, so everyone um, go visit kevin and mandy over at the living dead museum in monroeville mall monroeville pennsylvania and then you could go see them and gary and uh hang out say hi and that will be on june what is it 10th through the 12th for yeah, living dead weekend yep Amazing. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to experience that all over again. And it's going to be an absolute blast with you guys. Everyone who's out Break there a leg. You should definitely go to this. It's going to be amazing. So we're wrapping up tonight's edition of Night Talk. I want to thank Gary, Mandy, and Kevin for being with us tonight. All of you, so amazing. Thank you guys so much for being here. And thank you guys for tuning in and asking all your questions. We really appreciate it. So Craig here, signing out. And we will talk to you guys soon. Stay scared. Thank you.